I was going to say, could we have, could we hit recording? So thank you for doing recording. So uh, we are going to have a hello from Bashak, our incoming CEO. And uh, I guess I will just dig right in. Um, we announced uh, early in August that we have a leadership transition. Um, our longtime CEO and founder, Hugh McGuire, is shifting into an executive chairman role. Um, he has uh, a, a new venture that he is excited to focus a lot of his time and attention on. Um, and he made the decision to uh, shift uh, things around in his life so that he will still be involved in press books, um, but more from a strategic advisory role rather than part of our day-to-day -day managing the organization role. Um, and he invited our longtime chief operating officer, Bashak uh, Buchian, to uh, to uh, take the helm as our CEO. And so Bashak is a familiar face to many of you, but Bashak, would you like to say hello and uh, whatever you'd like to share with us? Absolutely. Um, well, hello again, everybody. My name is Bashak Buchanan. Um, Don't even try to pronounce my last name. I think it took my spouse a few months to figure that out, nail it. Uh, I'm originally from Turkey. I immigrated to Canada I think about more than 10 years ago now. And now I split my time between uh, Canada and Mexico. Um, I have been with Pressbooks for uh, five years now. And before that, I was actually with Rebus Foundation. Many of you are familiar with Rebus Foundation, our sister organization, and the executive director of Rebus Foundation is with us on the call today, Apurva. Um, uh, I have been very interested in uh, working in uh, organizations that try to do good in the world. Um, there was a period in my life where I felt that uh, that I needed to do something more so that I could feel uh, more fulfilled and I could contribute back to society. And it, it kind of ended up uh, shaping my, my career and I eventually found myself at, uh, at Pressbooks. Um, I'm familiar with many of your names and your photos or your faces that we see here. And I look forward to meeting um, as many of you as I can in conferences, in other settings and getting to know you more and the institutions that you represent. Uh, and, and I'm hoping to continue Pressbooks' direction in the direction that we've had over the last uh, decade and a stronger form. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me via LinkedIn. Uh, I can put my email in the chat if you have any, any questions and I look forward to working with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Bashak. All right, I will share my screen once again. Uh, all right, um, so we are now on to our main event for today, um, Pressbooks results. So as a recap, hopefully everybody knows what that is, but just as a brief recap in case this is new to anyone, um, Pressbooks results is a, a feature, it's a tool that will auto record scores for H5P activities that are embedded in Pressbooks books. Um, and it will send scores to the learning management system gradebook. Um, we have heard and seen from folks that have used this in prior pilots that it does increase student motivation to engage with the learning materials. It provides visibility into who's doing the reading and also it informs uh, instructors and students, um, gives them feedback about learning progress and, and helping um, inform the kinds of interventions that can support student learning. Um, so this is just a, a screenshot of what it might look like. We'll see a demo here in a minute. Um, we are we have just embarked on our fall pilot for Pressbooks results. Um, we had uh, have been communicating uh, with our client base to find out who's interested. Um, we had about 60 uh, different institutions or a few more than 60 say, yeah, we're interested. We want to understand more. Um, and we had in our initial pass over 80 people say, I, I'm interested whether it's using it with students or per to try, uh, uh, trying out a demo course or being involved in user research. So we knew not everybody was going to be ready to jump right in and use it with students, but we are, we've been interested in, in um, kind of a, a broader array of participation. Um, and so uh, at this point, we we have been communicating with the full group about what's happening, and we'll share more as we go. 
In terms of what's happening um, with people actually using Pressbooks results with students, so currently we have more than 20 institutions. Uh, we have upwards of 30 uh, fall pilot instructors who are on the path to be using it, if not actually using it yet. And we estimate that we'll have somewhere in the neighborhood of 3000 students using Pressbooks results this fall. Um, the numbers are a little bit fuzzy because the we're still in that startup window with uh, with back to school. And so these numbers are shifting um, daily. Um, but these are the pilot partners that have completed training so far. And um, and for the most part, if they've completed training, then uh, it's likely that they'll have at least one instructor and in, in, in various cases, multiple instructors who are trying it out. So that's just a quick view of what's happening on the ground with Pressbooks results right now. Um, and I'm going to hand things off to Michelle. Uh, our uh, UX uh, user experience point person with Pressbooks to um, uh, to help us uh, or to guide us through the live demo. And I think she's asked a couple of our client participants on the call to assist with that. So Michelle, go ahead. Thank you. All right. So we're going to do a little walkthrough with results just so we can see it uh, in Pressbooks and then how it works through the LMS. And we're going to be using Canvas today. Uh, and we have a couple of clients. We've got Lauren Ray and Cheryl Casey that will be helping us demo the software. Uh, and so I'm gonna ask Lauren, awesome, if you could um, share your screen, but also have the uh, chapter open, or not the chapter, but the book that I had shared with you on the demo network yesterday. All right, it's not so working. Yeah, that looks like it's working to me. Great. Uh, so this is the Pressbooks demo book that we're using for today's demo. Uh, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into a chapter. So theoretically, this demo is like, um, we've been working on this book and we're ready to bring it into the LMS, but we have a couple of finishing touches to do before we do that. Uh, so yeah, go into organize. Uh, and then we're gonna scroll down into, there's a demo chapter a bit further down. Uh, it's called Demonstration Chapter. And so this is the chapter we're going to be using today. Um, and if you could, Lauren, uh, open the permalink in a new tab just so we can see what this chapter looks like. Um, yeah, so this is a typical Pressbooks chapter. If you scroll through, we have a few H5P activities already built in. So we have this timeline. Uh, and then below it, we have a uh, sort of fruit matching. And then we have this um, astronomy question that I haven't put in yet, but we'll just do that right now, just to finish things off. So we'll go back to the edit chapter view. Uh, and then just below, you'll see that there's the fruit and astronomy and below astronomy, it's blank. So we're gonna include an H5P activity here. So if you go to the H add H5P button, uh, you'll see at the top, we've got this astronomy question that I've already put. So we're going to just insert this one here. We'll save the chapter. Um, and once that finishes, we'll head down uh, to the grade reporting box. I see that the save is still in progress. So, the, uh oh, didn't load. Hold on. Should I go back to organize? Yeah, let's go back to organize. Okay. And we'll just go back to the demonstration chapter. And it looks like everything has loaded okay. now. Looks like it's in there. So that's great. Yep, perfect. Uh, and so below that, Sorry about that. Have... just the, the luck of a demo, we're actually doing a, a deploy to this demo, this, 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 this infrastructure network as this is going on. It's an automated thing. It's <laughs> going on in the background. Very sorry about that. Very okay. bad timing. Bad luck. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know, Christopher. Um, uh, and so below that, we have this grade reporting block. And so this is basically what's going to communicate with the LMS to bring those uh, activities over so that we can actually see how students are answering them. And right now, none of them are selected. So you have the option if you do want them to be graded or not. Uh, and you can see that of the three questions, the last one, timeline demo, 
is actually not a gradable activity at all. So it's totally grayed out. Um, so Lauren, if you wanna uh, just select all of the activities, um, there we go. Uh, and then you also have a couple, you have a, a an option to sort of uh, put your grading scheme in before we get into the LMS. So right here we have a few options. There's first attempt, average attempt, last and best. And today I think we're gonna use the last attempt. So everything should be good to go to bring it into the LMS now. We'll save it once more just for good demo practice. Um, and then the next thing we're going to be doing is going into Canvas. Awesome. Uh, and so here we are in Canvas. I'll have you refresh just to be uh, safe because I know that it's been open a little bit. And yes, we will create a new module and we will bring in that information that we have in Pressbooks. So yeah, if you would uh, create a new module, we can name it Pressbooks Demo or whatever you'd like to. And once we have that, there's the little plus icon in the bar that says Pressbooks Demo. We'll click on that. Uh, and then we will add, uh, not an assignment, but if we use that drop down selector, uh, we'll use an external tool. And this external tool is uh, basically results. So there are a bunch of different networks in this list because it's Pressbooks, but we are going to be using, it's called, if you scroll down, it should be CA Central. Um, I saw it go past. All right. That's okay. Uh, if you go a little bit slower, then we should be able to find it. But yeah, there's the University yeah. CA Central Pressbooks mm -hmm. Content Selector. It usually should just show up as Pressbooks Content Selector in most LMSs, so it won't be this confusing, but alas. And so if um, many of the chapters show up, and as you can see, we have like a difference between linked resources and graded assignments. So anything that you choose to have those items graded as you saw in the previous screens will show up as a graded assignment. And whenever you don't have any of those H5P activities sort of selected, then it'll just show up as a linked resource. Uh, so this time we will put the demonstration chapter in and we'll actually just scroll back up to the top of the list because there's the results viewer and we will select that at the top as well. Yeah, and if you have multiple books on your network, all of those books will show up in this list so that you have the opportunity to import more if you'd like to. Uh, just in this case, we only have the one book in there. So we can just scroll back down and then import or select the content. All right, so we've got the demo chapter and the results viewer. Um, let's see here. The next thing that we're going to do is uh, we will publish these chapters. So we've got the publish all uh, at the top. There's a little check mark. Yes. So we'll select that. Uh, publish all modules and items. Um, and one thing you can do also, if you just click into the demonstration chapter, Uh, this is the sort of sample of what your students will see when they open it up. Um, but also on the right hand side, especially in Canvas, they have the edit assignment settings here. So if you have other sort of settings that you'd like to include, um, you can do it through this view uh, and go ahead and click in. Uh, you can see below that you can sort of designate different sort of point values. Uh, change your grading um, and submission types. We don't need to do any of this in this demo, but it, it, it just so everyone knows it does exist here. And of course in Brightspace and uh, Blackboard, there will be options to change your grading schemes as well or configure as you would like. Um, and so the next thing that we're going to do now that this is all published and basically ready to go is we're gonna switch to Cheryl Casey, who's going to show us what it's like to sort of complete this uh, as a student. And we will come back to you, Lauren, um, just to see the grades sort of update in the grade book uh, as Cheryl is completing the work.
All right. So uh, as you can see, you can refresh and it probably will bring up the information. Because oh, it has been published. Let me double check. Oh, there was one more uh, unpublished section and now I have selected publish. So sorry about that. That was my bad. If you refresh, it should go ahead now. All right. Uh, and so as a student, Cheryl can see, we've got the results viewer and the demonstration chapter. Uh, it's a very small course, but you can go ahead and click the demonstration chapter. and we will see all of the information show up. Uh, it's a very simple couple of H5P activities that we've put in this book. So um, if we'll just, if you could complete these, then uh, this is basically the point where, yeah, students are learning and checking their activities and we get to see how that works. Awesome. Uh, and so now that Cheryl has finished this module, then I guess she could go on to do different things, but we'll switch back to Lauren now just to see how Cheryl's work uh, actually then gets passed back into the gradebook. Awesome. So if you'll go to just grades on the navigation menu. Um, yep, we can see that uh, Cheryl shows up with a 10 out of 10 on those marks. Um, and then we also have uh, the option, uh, if you go back into, uh, where is it? But there's a little like a, a navigation menu with the three lines at the top of the screen, just so we can see the um, navigation, because uh, we're in grades, but we want to just move down to the module section. Yeah, because then we can come back also and take a look at the Pressbooks results viewer. Uh, and here you can see, uh, instead of having that lump score that was in grades, now we have it sort of split out between the two different activities that Cheryl completed. So you can see that she got a three out of three of the Drag the Words demo, and she got a one out of one on the astronomy question. And of course, Cheryl also has access to this information just to her own records on the student side, since the uh, acti this activity results viewer was published. Um, and basically, that is it. Um, uh, do we want to, like, because we had selected the sort of last attempt option, uh, we could go ahead and do another reattempt, or should we, are we happy with, uh, this, Julie? I just wanted to double check for timing, because I know. Yeah, why don't we, I think we can pause there. Okay. Um, so we have time for questions, and we've got a little bit more, we've got a few more agenda items that we want to go through, but, um, yeah, but to your point, if Cheryl went back and changed her scores, then mm -hmm. I don't know why she would because she got a hundred. But exactly, did, <laughs> then that would that would update the scores there as well. Um, so, any questions um, on from the group, uh, Linda? Hi. Um, so I'm just trying to wrap my head around this a little bit. Um, this these settings that you put into the chapter in the uh when you're when you're in the edit screen right um to select the h5p those are going to those settings are going to live in that book and every professor at your institution who uses the lti is going to live with those same settings correct and then my secondary question is, um, do these settings travel with the book if someone clones it? Uh, so Christopher, you're shaking your head. Do you want to respond to those questions? Yes, no, the, the settings do not travel with the book. They're, they're tied to the actual the URL of the book itself. So when that when there's a clone made with that, the LTI takes and things do not go with it, so. And, and and then to your first part of your question, Linda, um, the so the settings do pertain to the book. So all the instructors using the same book will 
have the same setting set in that book. Um, if instructors feel strongly about wanting to have their own set of settings, they could they could do that by cloning the book and then they could set their own grade settings. Um, There's no way to say uh, one professor wants to use the first exercise and the other professor wants to use the second exercise and not the first. Um, if they did that, they would need their own they they would each have their own copy of the same book and then they could they could uh, make their own settings in that way. Okay, uh, there's no way in the LMS to remove one of the exercises in the course in the LMS. Um, so so in so that that would be actually well, there are some settings that you did in the LMS. Yeah, so I, um, Michelle, do you, once something is brought in, is there a way to sort of suppress one of the items that's been brought in in the learning management system settings? Well, you can always change the modules and what you bring in, but when it comes to sort of like the grading H5P activities, if you want to select gradable or non-gradable, um, those are kind of things that are just built into the book, and so they would come through. Um, so it's a bit trickier, it, like you can include them, but you also, you can decide if you do or don't want to include them for grading. But yeah, if you have different, if you want to grade things differently, I guess, from the book side, like Julie mentioned, you would want to uh, clone the book and have two different copies if that is important to the instructor. So there were and, some, there were some um, settings in the, when you looked at the assignment backend in the LMS, so could you just make it worth zero or? Yep. Yeah. Not? And you can change the points possible, I guess. Um, and that is per assignment as well. Thank okay. You. So, or, all right. So then, um, so if, if we have two different, let me just, I want to make sure I'm understanding this clearly. So if you have two different instructors using the same book, um, the grade settings that on the press book side are going to be consistent but each instructor could choose to bring in different modules or they could choose to use the learning management system settings uh, to like zero out the value of some of the assignments if they choose to do so. So that's a way they could override the built-in settings in that, that I guess the built-in settings, the settings that are set consistently for all books or for, for everyone using that same book. Uh, Christopher. But this is a great question because I think it's something we just learned here that we should also add in our documentation that if there are two instructors using the same book and that if one instructor picks a bunch of HYP activities, sets up their course, and another instructor goes and changes that, that will affect both instructors. So we need to make that clear in our documentation. Thank you for this uh, question. It was not an expected use case. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Other questions? Can I, um, I have a question just kind of uh, following from that. So if an instructor at my institution finds a book on the Pressbooks directory that they would like to um, use H5P activities in or, or create new H5P activities in or edit those, um, they find that book on the Pressbooks directory um, and then they clone a copy for our institution if there are already embedded H5P activities that work with Pressbooks results, um, I guess I'm, I'm just thinking of kind of how they would, they would just customize those for um, their, our own instance of Canvas and their own assignment, but they would still maybe perhaps see those um, H5P activities and the, uh, LMS grade reporting section under the edit box on that chapter. Is that right? Yes. So when you clone a book, the H5P activities will come with it. The configuration from someone else's uh, settings would not. So you would want to go and pick which activities want to be graded. I'm sorry if you're hearing a lot of noise here. There's some construction going on inside me. But but yes, they they yes, the H5P activities do come with the book so then, but you can then pick your own custom uh grading configurations and 
that doesn't affect the other book, the, the source book, and the source book will not affect you. I think that would be really of interest, and you may already have kind of a video or instructions around that, but being able to kind of quickly demonstrate that to faculty at our institution, I think would be exciting. It is something that I think uh, is a little bit confusing to think through, like a textbook that I didn't author, but I want to import that into my Canvas class, like how would that work with results? So um, that's great to hear, and um, thank you. Um, Linda. Yes, this is a quick one, I promise. Um, so who, which roles in Pressbooks have um, permission to change these settings in the book? I believe it is uh, like administrators and editors. Um, yeah, editors and administrators, as Christopher says. Thank you. Um, one of the requests that we've had uh, also that we haven't taken action on, but uh, would be to create a Pressbooks collection that includes books that have been used with Pressbooks results. So as we start um, getting more of those, um, we will ask the author's permission before we, you know, throw something in there. But um, but that would be a, a great way to say these are some that have been, you know, effectively road tested. Um, and then folks, uh, you know, again, could could take a look at that and and use those both as models and also uh, potentially stuff that they know they could clone and other people have had success with. So, um, okay, Rebecca Lindsay question. When you say H5P activities come with a book, does that mean they are copied so you could edit them um, or do they link back to the original book so they could not be edited? Um, in, uh, so for the Pressbooks results to work, the H5P activities actually need to be part of the book. And so that's actually one of the things that's that's unique and been a little bit complicated about making the H5P work in Pressbooks. Um, the good thing, what, what that means is that uh, when you clone something, it gives you your own copy of that and you can edit that and, and do what you want with that. Um, uh, the it, when when folks are using h5p.com and sort of a centralized you know version of h5p, if you want to pull something from there, you need to you need to basically copy that and put a copy of it into your book um, for the grade pass back to work um, and. and uh, it, it, because of the I guess the the way that that um, the way that that interacts with the Pressbooks content. Um, uh, so questions about that or clarification on that? Okay. Um, okay, I'm just reading Ryan's comment. Um, thank you. Okay, so you're re reinforcing that request about showing that flow between cloning or finding a book, cloning a book, and and the implications if we want to, if somebody wants to use the H5P grade, grade pass back, how that works when um, when someone is cloning a book. So thank you for uh, seconding that, um, and we can uh, I, I think put a head nod to our our support and customer experience folks to uh, put that on our list of things that we want to make sure we're doing. Um, okay, and then a comment from Lauren. When you create H5P activities in Pressbooks, you can apply an open license to the H5P activity. Will this license be clear to instructors who are cloning and then editing the H5P activity in their new book to then be added to Pressbooks results? Um, so my, actually, so this one, I, uh, Mitch, you're, yeah, go ahead. I'll try a, a quick answer, a stab at this. So when uh, H5P activity comes over, then the, like you have access to the copyright settings. So there's like in the H5P activity itself, uh, you can uh, consult that and, and you can also make changes. Um, and uh, so they come over in with the same license um, as they had originally. 
but the authors then of the book administrators are able to change that license um, and also add their own name if they modify it to, to um, if it's a CC by, uh, by attribution one, for instance, they can add their own name and then save it that way. So, but there's like no um, mechanism uh, to my knowledge that prevents changing uh, the license uh, ultimately. Right, we inherited the license from the book itself or from the chapter. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? All right, we'll keep the questions coming. Um, I want to uh, now um, uh, get a little bit more perspective on what we're seeing and hearing as part of the uh, as part of the pilot. Um, I've asked uh, Mitch and Michelle to share just a little bit of perspective on what we're seeing and hearing and doing around training, support, and user research. Um, so, Mitch, would you go ahead? Sure. Thanks. And I'm loving the questions that are coming, uh, like the use cases, and especially also thank you for your feedback around what um, resources or uh, documentation material would be useful. That's really helpful for us to know. So um, with regards to training, um, in the last couple of weeks, uh, we've trained 26 instructors and 13 instructional designers and network managers on uh, results. And generally, the participants were really excited to discover and explore these new features. And the trainings, they covered uh, the objectives of the pilot, why we we're doing this, um, and how, to, how do you prepare a, a book for grading, how you bring it into uh, Canvas, Blackboard, or Brightspace specifically as an assignment. So basically, also everything that you've seen in, in the demo and a little bit more around uh, the settings that you can change and um, how to view the, the students' um, graded, uh, grades uh, in, in the gradebook of the LMS. And we also shared support resources that are available to the pilot participants during uh, the pilot. And as a follow-up also, we provided individualized support to a number of instructors to just make sure that uh, everyone was ready to use results for the start of their classes. With regards to the support requests that we got, they were related um, mostly to one of two issues, um, either difficulties bringing content into the LMS as assignments, or then it, that grades for specific activities were not registering. For the former, we noticed that um, Brightspace administrators needed to complete a couple of additional steps in the configuration of the LTI tool to make results work. And we've since incorporated this information into the documentation. Another issue that instructors did encounter was that they use a different email address for their LMS uh, to log in than they use for Pressbooks. And that uh, then the user doesn't get matched and so uh, they can't um, access their material in the LMS. And this then requires a change to the Pressbooks user account to uh, make that uh, really align. And uh, uh, for the other topic, so where the the specific grades for specific uh, activities were not registering, um, the couple of reports we had about this, we found out in each of the cases, they weren't really caused by the results plugging itself. In one instance, the cause was a human error in the process of migrating uh, an instructor's configuration from the old to the new results. And in another case, the cause was an outdated H5P library in the Pressbook. So our biggest takeaway from the first couple of weeks um, of the results pilot is really that we need to be proactive about informing instructors about two matters that could impact the results experience. First, first it's important for instructors to update the libraries for their H5P libraries in their books as they become available in the H5 content hub in their book. And the second point is that it is important for instructors to actively communicate the specific settings 
Safari on Mac OS or browsers on iOS require. And the other takeaway so far, and, and it's still early because like not everyone's um, everyone's term has started yet. So the feedbacks are limited to uh, where classes have actually started. But so far, the takeaway is that it seems to be working, generally be working well. And no bugs with the plugin itself have been reported. Thank you, Mitch. Um... All right, there, there are a couple of questions in the chat. Um, uh, so one, um, Etta is asking, um, or sorry, um, yeah. So Etta asking about each course needing their own press book um, and uh, some thought as to uh, a shared press book that's protected so instructors can bring stuff over to the learning management system, but not allow changes to the book. Um, so this is something we um, we're early enough that we haven't started thinking about use cases like that, but we're open as we're seeing and hearing more about how folks would like to use this functionality of exploring that and seeing what what might make sense. Um, I will say that right now, as part of our pilot, we do have a couple of uh, cases where multiple instructors are using the same book, like kind of a, a department-wide or a shared implementation. And so we are learning about that use case um, where they do have to all use the same grade uh, configuration, but um, but multiple instructors in the same book. So there is some of that, but um, as we go further, um, I think we'll, uh, we'll, these are the kinds of questions that if, if you see use cases, please surface them with us. Um, and we may come back to you and say, okay, help us understand more about some of these different uh, ways that folks might want to use this functionality. Um, and then uh, is there an option for regrading questions uh, if something was entered wrong initially? Um, and so at least you're thinking if if the instructor chose an incorrect response and, and then found out later that the correct answer, um, I, I don't think we have an automatic way to do that for grades that have already been submitted but um but if the instructor um and I, i'm looking at michelle if the instructor recognized the problem in the h5p activity and corrected that would they need to re-import that activity um or does the change take effect at that point and they wouldn't need to re-import the activity michelle do you know about that I know they would certainly need to change the H5P activity, and I am uncertain about how that would affect. That would, Christopher, do you have any idea of how that could affect, or, um, or if the, they would have to resubmit their answers again? Um, yeah, I'm. I'm just getting some confirmation on that. I I have some ideas, but I don't want to give the wrong answer, so I I would can certainly get back to you on it. Okay. Yeah, because it, it, it we don't have a mechanism to retroactively change or correct past answers that were submitted, but uh, it but wait, that's what we'll have to check on. You know, if they figure out the error and correct it, what happens going forward? Does it have to get reimported, or or does that um, does that happen uh, from that point forward? Okay, am I? Um, all right, keeping an eye on time and uh, questions. Um, let's see. Uh, is it that only instructors assigned to the book and press books as an author can use the book through LTI or can any instructor at the institution use the book? Uh, I So... Christopher, can you comment on that? Yeah, I, I, I believe that it's only someone who's an administrator and editor of the book. Uh, and uh, well, I'm just getting a confirmation on that, too. Unfortunately, the smarter people here are working away, uh, building new features. And I just asked them if they could uh, clarify that for me. But I, I'm very close to being certain, but I don't want to say 100%. Sorry. Okay. Um, 
All right. I, you know, I, part of what I, let, let me say, I, I want to go back through the chat and use this as sort of an, an FAQ. I, I think we've answered a lot of the questions, but may not have definitive answers to everything. So we will, I will take the action item to uh, capture the chat, and then we'll make sure that we're providing more definitive answers to these questions and then sharing it back out as part of the materials when we, um, when we share the recording, uh, which will probably happen next week. Okay, um, last couple of things, or uh, let's see, actually before, so Michelle, briefly, um, can you, and for those that need to go, uh, we understand people have other things. So if we lose you, uh, tune in to the recording and we'll share the slides in the recording at the very end um, uh, or, or next week after the fact, but Michelle, would you do a, a brief update on the user research? Absolutely. Uh, so as part of the research for Pressbooks results, we conducted a survey about the results activity viewer. We got a chance to see that um, when we pulled up Cheryl Casey's results. Um, and so at the time when we had put out the survey, we uh, did not have um, like working software yet. Uh, and so we had basically just shared this sort of Figma mockup that so showed exactly what we were looking for when we did it. Um, and so... Uh, our respondents really said like, it looks really intuitive and clean and easy to navigate. Um, and now that we have the real working software, I'm really looking forward to seeing how the use of the viewer is actually going for those who are already using it. Um, so we did that. And then we also asked some of the, because this is an MVP and it's quite um, bare bones in what it is providing, but it is providing the detailed scores, which is something that's very important. Uh, we also asked what are the next sort of things that we should be building. So we were talking about student views. So enabling the students to view their own HPIP activity details and scores, uh, usability improvements for this table itself. So enhancing the usability of it to make it a more flexible experience with different viewing options and information. Uh, and then also details about the HPIP activities and attempts. Uh, so more drill town views for the individual activities especially that's very important for um, looking at attempts and looking at um, the H5P activities that are nested and have multiple questions built in. Uh, so all of these things were ranked quite highly by all of our participants, but there was a slim margin where the like H5P details and student views really came to the surface with the chart improvements being a little bit behind. Um, we have uh, already started and are have the student views that are part of the first release. So students can view their attempts or their scores on their end of the LMS. Um, and we will be working our way into looking at more of the H5P uh, views coming up next. Uh, and so I believe that's on the slide. Sorry, Julie, I uh, shared the screen and so got rid of your slide deck. Um, that's okay. But we are uh, on our way starting to think about those details. And once we get further along, I'm definitely going to be sending out emails to uh, our research participants or anyone that had selected that they're interested in results research. So that is going to be coming up. And that's it for me. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Last couple of things. Um, we will make a Pressbooks results demo course available in mid-September. So this will be a, a, a course where, uh, and we will um, introduce it with a hands-on walkthrough uh, kind of webinar activity for people that want to join and uh, play around with it in real time and they can play around with it afterwards. So it allows people to try it out and see how it works. And um, we would welcome feedback about that experience. Um, so again, we'll, we'll share more information as that is available. Um, we also, I, I, uh, this is more of a preview. We just completed our 2024 customer satisfaction survey. Thank you to everyone who participated. Uh, we were delighted with the response and participation rates. Um, this went out to Pressbooks network managers. Um, and also it, it made us want to also uh, do what may be the first ever kind of instructor end user type survey. So we have some ideas of what that might look like. Um, but this is in particular the network manager view. Um, and in actually next month in September uh, for our, pr our uh, product update, 
Um, we will have the opportunity to do kind of a town hall with Bashak, our new CEO, um, and she will also be sharing some highlights from the uh, the customer satisfaction survey. Since we are over time, I will not dwell on what's here. Um, I had just a few uh, kind of preview data points, um, but uh, come back in September and look out for that, and we will um, we'll share more about that uh, then. And um, so for webinars and events, we have our, uh, in September, we've got our getting started in advanced uh, press books, uh, webinars, those are available to anyone, including any end users. So please send them uh, to that training if that would be helpful. Um, again, our Pressbooks product update in September uh, will be the 26th and uh, the key topics there will be customer satisfaction and our new CEO. Um, we'll we'll have you know a few updates on Pressbooks results as well, um, but uh, the the primary focus will be those other topics, and then anyone who'll be at the Open Education Conference, we will be there in person and also have some uh, some of the hybrid virtual participation as well. So hopefully we'll see a lot of you there. All right, um, that's all of the important things we wanted to uh, cover. We've run out of time for our roundtable. Um, formally, but I uh, will stay on for a little bit longer um, if folks want to share or have questions. So um, yes, and Christopher has just posted if you've got more questions or more clarification, his email is there. We'll capture the questions from the um, uh, from the chat today and make sure those get answered and shared back out as well. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we can stop our recording at this point. Thanks for 